October 1973, Atlanta made history. Maynard Jackson was elected the first black mayor of a large southern city. Never! 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 Never shall I let you down. Being the first black mayor is what you wish on your enemy, okay? And I say that with tongue in cheek, a great pride to be mayor of Atlanta, and every black mayor has been the first black mayor of America, I'm sure has felt the same thing, but it truly is, um, is part hell. First of all, start with exaggerated black expectations. That overnight, Valhalla will be found. Heaven will come on earth, and it's all because the black mayor has been elected. And things just don't work that way. The obligation that I felt was to try with everything in my power, in every legal and ethical way that I could, to move things as quickly as possible in that direction. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Thank you. We must see the other Atlanta, the one across the tracks, the inner city one, the Atlanta in the valleys and the shadows just beyond the first expressway exits one passes when leaving downtown. It made, really made a difference because that's the first black mayor we had. And that's what we was working hard for, to bring a black person in office, you know, that knew some of the plight of the poor peoples. All of a sudden I became the mayor, not just of Atlanta, but of the black people in Georgia and even some neighboring states. Now equally important and equally difficult was what we found in the white community exaggerated anxiety. That anxiety was, oh my God, what are we going to do? we got a black mayor. What does this mean? Is this the end of Atlanta? We had just come through a runoff election where my opponent ran a campaign that said Atlanta's too young to die. I supported a white candidate. And uh, as most white people did, yeah, we, we were very frightened because uh, we had nothing to go on, no, there had been no experience there, and we had no idea what was going to happen. I came to Atlanta in the summer of 1972, and I had read Ebony Magazine and seen where it was black Mecca, and, and there were people saying that if you were black and had a college degree, this was the best place in the world to uh, live. It's an excellent place for some black peoples. It is. It's an excellent place for some black people, but not for all black people. It's not an excellent place to live. Because if it was an excellent place to live, they would give people some jobs. Atlanta was hard hit by a nationwide recession. Many Atlantans subsisted on unemployment benefits. Well, it's $37 a week. It's not much to live on. It won't even cover food expenses for four kids and myself alone. The thing about it is that it may seem like a nice vacation to some people, but it's really, really bad for the economy, and people are really worried about it. Jackson moved into a public housing project for a weekend. The Thomases were selected to be his host family. So it was very strange. And the strangest thing to me was that uh, they chose me to house him. So when I got off from work, I came up to the edge of the apartments and I looked down in the court, and the court was just full of news, news medias, just full of people. I know I couldn't go through that crowd, so I turned around and I went all the way down through the back, and I crawled up my back steps to get in my house to avoid the news media. But when um, I got in the house, then I seen, you know, the mail coming. I knew I had to open the door then. It was just a mob, really. 
just a pew mob, just fell all in the doors, standing all up on my furniture, so. We want to dramatize what are dramatically horrible conditions. So the people will understand when we begin to talk about dramatic changes and dramatic corrective action. So we're not just overreacting. The conditions here defy description. The mayor had limited impact on federally funded public housing. But Jackson did have the power to change the way the city operated. He hired more minorities and women. Officer Brett. He moved against discriminatory business practices. Affirmative action was already federal policy. Jackson made it city policy. When I became mayor, zero point five percent of all the contracts in the city of Atlanta went to Afro-Americans in the city which at that time was 50-50. Many in the business community resisted Jackson's affirmative action policy. Uh, this was a, a major um, uh, manager of a major white corporation who got very upset with me about the policy and affirmative action and um, said uh, I don't see this to be necessary we're gonna do what's right you know you can trust us and so forth and I said I have every confidence but um, you know I want to trust you but I also want you to sign on a dotted line I uh, said so, well look I'm just not gonna go out and hire the first Negro I see I said I think that's a pretty sound personnel policy. I said I wouldn't either. 